In today's video, we will be reviewing this 33-inch matte black stainless steel um, farmhouse sink. I bought it off Amazon from a company called Bokea. I'll leave a link in the description below. Uh, overall, I am really satisfied with the quality of the sink. One thing about it is that it's very sturdy, very strong, and very durable. I've had all type of stuff in here so far, paint, tools. Uh, we beat up stuff around here. Our family is very, um, very hard on stuff, and, and this has um, held, held up pretty good. It's only been installed for about a month, um, but overall, I would say that this is a really high-quality, easy-to-maintain sink. It's 33 inches wide, and I put it into a 33-inch existing base cabinet. Now, I would say this. If you can find the base cabinets that are designed for farmhouse sinks, I would strongly suggest that you just buy that. In my case, I couldn't find the correct detail, and so I had to build my own doors. I had to chop this thing down. I had to do a lot of uh, retrofitting in order to make it work, and I'm gonna go through that process in this video. But for the first part, I just wanna do a review. So stick around if you wanna see the installation of this um, farmhouse sink. Manufacturer specified this is about 22 inches deep from outside to outside, but the inside, the inside is about 16 and a half. So that's how much you have to work with. Now this is a 50-50 double, meaning that it's 50% on this side, 50% on that side, they're even. They do come like 60-40, 70-30, even 80-20. But this one is, you know, half and half. So the half is about 15. So each sink is about 15 by 16 and a half, which is plenty to work with. It came with some very useful accessories. This is a vegetable, fruit, um, wash station, I guess, basket, strainer, I don't know what you want to call it. But anyway, you put your vegetables and your fruit in here, rinse them off. It has little slices, slits in the back so it can drain. And then it's cutting board, which we use all the time, as you can see. Uh, this thing gets used constantly. And um, so you can take your fruits and vegetables, put it on your cutting board, cut, and then slice them off into the garbage disposal. Uh, it also has this little rack here. And the quality of this rack is really good. I mean, it's, and it's strong, too. It's really, I don't even understand how they did that. But anyway, this typically gets folded up over here, and then you unroll it. And when you wash your dishes, you know, this serves as a, you know, as a, place to you know put your dishes or whatever the case is um, it does hold glasses and everything you know nice and flat and you know it drains out and then when you're done with it you just roll it back up so that's a really cool feature the mountain hardware that it came with um, these clips here you know it's one clip going one side the other clip going the other side and then uh, these plastic clips that you kind of like drill out and put in there and then you have the screws that you screw in and it you know makes it nice and solid now I didn't use this at all because it didn't work in my application it also came with these trays stainless steel trays at the bottom and they kind of have rubber you know feet on them and then also rubber bumpers well these are plastic bumpers on the side now this one is missing a couple of bumpers. So it's missing a bumper here and it's missing a bumper here. It wasn't missing when I got it. It's just over time, I guess, you know, they kind of popped off and, you know, don't know where they're at. And no additional ones actually came with it. Same thing on the other side, but this side hardly comes. You can see that right there is kind of like tight. And so that bumper keeps that, uh, keeps it from scratching this stainless steel. But yeah, no additional bumpers came in the in the bag, and so I would say that it'd probably be cool if they had um, a couple of replacements in the bag. This it did come with two strainers. Now this strainer is not, you know, it's kind of like uh, cheap. It works, but it's it's cheap quality. It came with a, just a rubber gasket that you screw on, um, put the rubber gasket on, and you screw the uh, strainer from the bottom, and it holds. It doesn't leak. Um, it does have this little, you know, ball here that you put the strainer in and just pop it down and that will, that's what locks the water in. And it holds, but 
It's not the best strain in the world, but it works. And you can see the sink has contour in it, more like drain lines. And so when you run the water, it drains. Of course, that depends upon your installation. You have to make sure that it's level, you know, but as long as you install it level, there's no problem with water holding in the sink, which is great. The stainless steel quality, we abuse this thing. So uh, there's been paint mixed in here. I mean, cleaned in here, uh, barbecue grills. One thing about it is that this, uh, this grill, I use it all the time, and it actually sits down in there. And I could never do that with my previous sink. So I can actually have this thing in here soaking. Uh, before my previous sink, it always had to like be up like this and never was able to be fully submerged into water, which is great. Uh, but yeah, the, the stainless steel is 16 gauge, and it's freaking durable. It's very durable. It's very scratch resistant. It's just high quality material. And so I'm really more than anything impressed by that. I think by going edge to edge, it really gave it more of a substantial look. I just didn't like the little, you know, the little uprights that came on the side of these. You can see on the other side of the dishwasher, it just kind of like butts up to the dishwasher. And it looks amazing. The build quality, again, guys, I'm telling you that this sink is really built strong and sturdy. Um, I love the contour, how it contours out. I love that. It just gives it a more of a, I don't know, a fancy look, I guess. That's the that's the word I want to want to call it and describe it. I believe the color they call this um, gunmetal. Um, and again, that cabinet was retrofitted. And, and I believe that it came out really nice. Uh, we're going to look inside of it here and see what it looks like mounted inside. So the outside of the sink has a sound dampening material on it, and it actually works. So when you run the water, it doesn't give you that hollow um, stainless steel sound. When you run the water, it's more deadening. Um, so it kind of like softens the water sound as water is running. Uh, this is the detail of the install. I have to notch out the side of the cabinets, and then I use two by four, and then I use two by three as, um, as support legs. And I did that on each side, made sure that it was level, and glued it with granite marble construction adhesive. This sink is not going anywhere. Um, that is the basket strainer. And these cabinets were, I don't know, 22, 23 years old. And all in all, it turned out very well. The installation is clean and um, and the sink wasn't that hard to install at all. With this particular farmhouse sink, the countertop sits on top and so the sink has to be installed prior to the countertop installation. So we're going to demo the countertop. We're going to disconnect all of the plumbing and then we're going to prep this base cabinet in order to fit this farmhouse sink. Okay, this sink is 33 inches wide and the base cabinet is 33 inches wide. So it's gonna go all the way over to over. So what I have to do is that I have to cut out the front of the face. The depth of the, um, the sink is 10 inches. So I'm gonna go down 10 inches and then I need to figure out the reveal, how much of this sink is gonna actually come over the edge and that's taste. You can do it two inches, you can do it an inch. I'm gonna do it an inch and a half. So it's gonna overhang an inch and a half, and then from this inch and a half mark, well, the whole depth here of this finished piece, because if you come in here and look, this finished piece goes to here, and then you have inside. So I really need to just worry about how much of the cabinet is I'm gonna cut out so I can fit this portion in there. The whole um, finished side is six inches. I'm gonna have an inch and a half reveal, so that means that I need to come over here, 
And I'm just going to set my tape on an inch and a half, and then I'm going to mark where six inches is at. And that's about right there. Now what I need to do is transfer this measurement here, here, and down 10 inches. Kind of already pre-marked that. We use a carpenter square. And I need to go down. Ten inches. Same thing over here. This yeah, this is kind of jacked up. This right here is kind of jacked up, so kind of just be careful. I might need to use a level on this, but I'll see. The face. <coughs> Come down 10 inches. Mark on my face. I'm not going to mark this one because I'm just going to take this out. And I'll do the same thing over here. And I'm not going to be able to get my carpenter square in there. Go off that door to be fine. So I need to cut this whole face out from right there to there. Then I also need to cut the whole cabinet out. <laughs> I got to cut this whole cabinet out because, again, this thing spans the whole distance of the cabinet. So, and it's better to use a level, a level here, but I'm using a carpenter square and a framing square. So my mark there. We'll do the same thing on this side. Make sure that this line goes all the way down so I have a proper cut line. And do the same thing on the other side. So I have to cut notch this whole cabinet out. I'm going to use my oscillating tool to cut all of this stuff out. Now, I'm going to save this piece because I'm going to reuse this piece when I rebuild the cabinet. Okay, that's all the way through. Can't get down in there. I have to go through oscillating on that side. This is a half inch press board, right? I'm gonna screw two by fours into this, but this two by four is only as good as what it's sticking into. I am not gonna trust two full uh, things of water off of a couple of anchors on the side of this. I'm just not gonna do it. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna mount this two by four where it needs to go but I'm going to come underneath it with a couple of braces and also screw that in too. That way I can make sure that this is really solid under there and I'm not um, I'm not going to um, have a sink that's going to fall 
because it has too much weight and not enough support. Thickness of a two by four is inch and a half. Thickness of the side is a half. So I'm gonna use two inch screws. So I might need to make some adjustments here and there. But we'll see how it go. Now I just want to take it and mark where I need to make my adjustments at. But one of the things that I realized is that the top here, again, the top here is 33. Now that 33 follows all the way back. Even though the inside gives you enough room to put the inside in between the cabinets, the top needs to be flush with the rest of the countertops. So if I leave this like this, the top sits on top of this, these side pieces and raises this whole sink up by that amount. And that looks like an eighth of an inch, probably just the size of a saw blade. So what I need to do is that I need to take the top, follow this line up, I need to take the top and I need to cut probably about an eighth of an inch off the top. Do that both sides and that way the sink will sit down in here and then when it sit down in here the top of it will be flush with the rest of the countertops. Now the wood is carrying the weight I'm going to put upright braces on either side. The wood is carrying the weight. I can cut this even further if I wanted to, but I have to have something that the countertop sits on. And this wood that I'm putting here is going to determine that height. So I'm going to cut this real quick. Um, let's see how, how I need to go. Cuts about right. About right there. Same thing on this side. Right there. And I already have my blade set to the right to the right um depth. And I'm just gonna go across this top here and just cut that. It's looking pretty good. You see that level sits on there and it sits on here. Now as far as the bubble, the bubble might not be level, but the plane, that's what's more important. The plane from one surface to the next surface has to be planed across. Uh, that way when your countertop sits on, it'll sit on nice and uh, flush. So these are like anchors that you screw into like a hard car top. You got screws. One side goes to one lip. This goes to the granite and then you put it up there and it makes the, um, makes the sink secure. Just makes it real tight. Doesn't work in my application because again, I went from cabinet all the way to cabinet. And there's no way for me to get anything up there on the side to try to screw that to get it solid. So what I'm going to use is basic mirror and marble and granite construction adhesive. And I'm gonna just glue this really good here. And I'm gonna set the sink on top of that. And that is going to make that where the bottom is not gonna move. Once we get all the plumbing and everything locked in place, we get the countertop um, tight. This sink literally is not going anywhere again ever in life so 
just gonna take this, put it in here, smooth the glue a little bit, that's there. <clears throat> And you could probably sit an elephant on top of that and it's not going anywhere. You notice I'm flush here. I'm flush all around. I took my level and made sure that I was good across, good this way, good this way. You know, I just made sure that I was good so when this granite goes on top, it'll make sure that it sits on this sink nice and flush. And you're going to do a bead of caulk silicone all the way around and then that countertop will sit on there and then you'll get that caulk out so you got glue up top and I know silicone is not glue but in construction world silicone is glue and then you got the glue at the bottom then you got your structures and so that's it that's the installation of a farmhouse sink uh, retrofitting into an existing cabinet just the sink portion now I still have to come back and I have to rebuild the doors and I have to rebuild the um, the face and here is the final product so I really enjoyed this installation and I hope you enjoyed the video if you haven't subscribed to the channel then make sure you subscribe also check out those other videos that's going to be related to this particular install it was just too much to put into one video uh, thumbs up hit that bell if you want to be notified for videos that I upload in the future and once again thank you so much for watching until the next time hey.